Fish on. Fish on the mag lift, baby. Who's got the mag lift going fast? about 25 feet deep, 28 feet of water. There are a few marks there. Don't know what it is. Some kind of trout, I'm sure. Fighting pretty good a minute ago. Not fighting that great right now. It's kind of coming my way. You never tell though. Sometimes big fish will come right to the kayak. You just don't know. Oh, nice fish, nice brown. Ah, beautiful brown trout. Woo! <laughs> Power trolling early in the morning. And of course the maglip. Maglip is just an incredible, just an incredible lure. So there we go. Alright, flip the hook. Let's get that hook out of the way. Be careful. Now, this fish is bleeding a little bit from the mouth. But he's going to be just fine. I'm going to give him a quick dip. I'll show him to you guys. And uh, we'll get him on his way. But he's just... French Meadows, baby. Look at that brown. Look at that beautiful fish. We'll get him revived. I'm going to revive him in the net because the water's warm on the top here. It's about 70 degrees up on the surface. But we'll get him back in the water. Maglip, man. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. Now that was a dandy brown trout, but the problem is that's the only trout I caught this week. I fished for six hours that day. I got two strikes, one fish, one hookup. That was it. It was a dandy fish, but uh, this has been the same pattern for me for three or four weeks. Um, we've had very stable weather. Surface temperatures, even in the high Sierra, while they're coming down a little bit, they're still very warm. Food? Food is plentiful, so as a result, I'm dealing with fish that are a lot like people the day after Thanksgiving. They've got a pumpkin pie hangover. They've eaten the turkey. They've eaten the stuffing. The refrigerator is full of leftovers. Are those people going to climb out of the recliner, jump in the car, and drive 15 miles to go to a pizza place and have all you can eat salad and extra large pizza and a big, you know, a big picture of soda or, or beer or whatever? No. Well, if they were trout, I would say they're not in a mood to chase. Okay, they're not aggressive, not hungry, not hungry enough to jump in the car, drive over there and get that pizza. And the trout, in most cases, they're not hungry enough to move up 10 or 15 feet in the water column and grab a spoon that's zipping along at two and a half miles an hour. They don't have to do that. Everywhere they look, there's food. They eat when they wanna eat. They're very comfortable, they're down deep, and no one's bothering them, and they're tough to catch. Now. Basically, I've been using two approaches to catch fish. You've seen approach number one, and it is absolutely deadly. It produces limit after limit after limit, but it ain't the most sexy thing in the world because it requires me to use a threaded worm and some sort of flasher, whether it's a, a turbo or uh, maybe a small dodger like one of my mini willows, something like that. It's slow. It's methodical. It depends on natural bait, keeping the bait in the strike zone, and then when you start seeing those subtle pecks and taps, it requires you to manipulate your speed and really try to actively hook those fish with whatever kind of craft you're in, whether you're in a boat or a kayak or whatever. Um, you've seen me do that, so now, you know, I'm not looking to take a bunch of fish home and I'm looking for kind of more exciting action. I'm looking to use some different stuff. So I've kind of backed off the most effective pattern, which would be the worm. So the other way I've been able to trigger fish is with sheer aggression. And that's how I got that brown trout this week. And kind of let me tell you the story. I've been fishing the same reef at, at French Meadows for a month because it's holding fish. And you know, it starts off in about 15 feet of water and it descends down into 50. So. I can kind of use my sonar to figure out what the depth of the fish are and then, you know, manipulate my gear accordingly. Well, my intention this week was to go and jig on that reef, which I did, ultimately didn't catch anything jigging, 
but I decided I would troll my way down there because it's a ways from the, from the boat launch. And uh, as soon as I got to the leading edge of the reef, Mark, two nice arches there. So about 25-ish feet deep. So my first pass, I came back around and I was pulling a mag lip because I wanted big, bold, I wanted killer action, lots of vibration, that skip beat action, it, you know, it, it draws strikes. So I really wanted to pound those fish. So first pass, I came around and I positioned the lure at what I figured to be 15 feet, maybe 10 feet over the top of the fish. I went through there. Um, there was no apparent movement from the fish on the sonar and I didn't get hit. So I circled out, I came back around, and now all my three colors of lead core, I was using my hybrid lead core rig. I had all three colors of lead core in the water, but I let out another, uh, not 50 feet, 25 feet of braid backing. And I figured that combined with the diving ability of the 3.0 mag lip, was gonna get me down pretty much right in the face of the fish. So came around, got the lure working, straightened out, came back on my track, and sure enough, there's the marks, there's the hookup, super aggressive. But the only reason I was able to draw that strike is I had this plug just come in on those fish right, right through them apparently at about 3.4 miles an hour. Um, my rod is just, you saw it in the video, my rod was just straining against the action of this plug and uh, kaboom, that fish hit. And he didn't hit that well. He wasn't hooked very well. He was bleeding a little bit, but he was just hooked on the, on the edge of the mouth. So that plug came blitzing in and that fish made a, a half-hearted swipe at it, but he ended up catching the hook and it ended up catching him in a firm enough part of the mouth for me to land that fish. And that was it for the day. I could have went home right then and been ahead because I didn't get another hit for the rest of the day. I tried jigging, drop shotting, um, a little bit uh, more aggressive trolling, um, got smoky, got hot, and uh, Lucy and I, we headed for the hills, man. We cut our losses, we had a nice fish on video, and uh, it was time to head out. So those are just two things for you to think about as you go hit the water, and everybody's kind of fishing style is different, but those are the two ways that I've been drawing strikes during these kind of, these doldrum weeks, you know, the slow natural bait approach. And you know, if you're really not into the worms, you could substitute that worm for a gulp worm, one of my grubs, a tube, a small fly, something like that. But what you're not gonna get, with the, with the gulp, you might get it. With the worm, you're absolutely gonna get it. You're, you're not gonna get, typically with a grub or whatever, you're not gonna get those repeated bites and you're not gonna be able to play out a strike. They're gonna come up, they're gonna hit it, they're gonna get hooked or not. With the gulp, you're gonna get a little bit of that biting action and they'll stick with it for a while. It's hard for them to get a piece of the gulp off though, so they tend to kind of get bored and go away. With the worm, when you're seeing all that biting, they're getting little bits and pieces. They know it's real meat. They know it's something to eat. And, and they're willing, once they get a taste of it, they're willing to stay with it. And you can hook 60, 70, maybe even 80% of those fish that come knocking on the worm. The other way is to use a plug like the 3.0 Maglib, a Rapala, a big spoon, a speed spoon, and you know just troll really fast, but be aware, those fish are not going to move a lot. They're not going to move laterally a lot. They're not going to move up a lot. So you got to kind of get the lure right in the strike zone. You got to get in their face if you're going to draw those reaction strikes right now. I think we are just, just days, weeks, there's no predicted of this pattern breaking. I noted that the surface temperature at French Meadows had come down two degrees. It doesn't sound like much, but it's moving in a positive direction. Shorter days, cooler nights, it's gonna drive the action in the high Sierras first. When the fish get the first inclination that the surface temperature's becoming more comfortable and that fall is truly in the air on that instinctive level, they know I have to feed because there's gonna be a long period of you know basically you know dormant months and I'm gonna have to live on my fat reserves. So we are coming up on one of the most furious feeding windows of the entire year, but we gotta be patient. It's based on the length of the day, it's based on the surface temperature, it's based on the weather. So 
when we start getting those crisp cold nights up in the high Sierra, those Sierra lakes are gonna go off. Next, it's gonna be the Foothill lakes. And by late November, you know, we're gonna be having great fishing from the Sierras all the way down to the valley floor. It's coming, we gotta be patient. But uh, if you're out right now, you're struggling, natural bait slow, plugs and big spoons fast, those have been my keys for success. Hope this helps you on the water. If you are looking for gear, rods, reels, spoons, soft plastics, whatever, you know the drill, fishhuntshoot.com. That's where I feature all the gear you see me using here on the channel. Gear that fishes great, gear that just flat out works, and uh, you know I offer everything up at the fairest price possible. I'm Cal Kellogg, thanks for all the support. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't, hit that little bell and you'll get a notification every time I'm on YouTube talking fishing. I'm signing off for now. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys.